Hi, everyone. Welcome to Bonnie's 2022 Winter Series. Thank you for being here. It's wonderful to be back together again. We have a mix of people who have participated in Bonnie's past series and uh, a lot of new people who are joining for the first time. Let us know in the chat uh, whether this is your first time joining Bonnie or if you've participated in any of her past series. We'd love to know who is here. It takes a team to make Bonnie's online classes possible. We're gonna take just a couple of minutes to introduce everyone who is in front and behind of the scenes. My name is Basha. I'm the project manager for Bonnie's events, books, and videos. I'm also Bonnie's daughter. We have Bonnie, who I guess needs no introduction, Len, would you like to let people know who you are? Yes, I'm Len. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Bonnie's husband, and I'll be behind the camera today. And we just celebrated 52 years together. And your 80th birthdays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, you also have Issa. Everyone, I'm Issa, um, Bonnie's son. Um, I'm also the class administrator. Uh, thank you for taking time to share with us. And we look forward to being with you today. And Amardeep. Hi, everybody. My name is Amardeep. I'm a virtual event producer. And I'm very happy to be part of the BMC family. Thank you. Yes. Okay, in addition to hosting this class on Zoom, we are simultaneously broadcasting it on YouTube Live. If you experience any issues in Zoom, please go to the class on YouTube Live. The link to the YouTube Live class is in the same email that contains your Zoom link. I will also post a direct link in the Zoom chat in just a moment. If you have not already introduced yourselves in the Zoom or YouTube Live chats, please take a moment to do so now. Uh, we really want to know who's here, who you are, where you're located, what, what brought you here. Um, we, open, we open class um, 30 minutes early uh, so that if you'd like to join us for some virtual mingling in the chat, um, it gives us some time to say hi to each other before class starts. Uh, Bonnie also reads your messages as they come in and greets, her in, greets you in her own way. For those of you attending the class in Zoom, at the bottom of your screen, you have an icon called chat and one called Q&A. If you have any questions for Bonnie about the material she presents today, please type it into the Q&A and she will take some time towards the end of class to respond to as many questions as possible. And if you're joining the class on YouTube Live and have questions for Bonnie, post them in the chat there. The Zoom chat for each class will be made available to all participants. We have a few guidelines for the chats. The chat is a space for sharing your experience, your experiences, thoughts, and questions about the material Bonnie presents in class. Promoting your classes, events, or services in the chat is not permitted. For everyone in Zoom, a reminder that if you wanna share your chat message with everyone, you need to change the setting in the chat in the chat drop-down menu before you send your message. Otherwise, your message will only go to Bonnie and her team. The Zoom chat will be enabled for the entire class. If you don't want to see the Zoom chat pop-ups, there is a way to hide them. You can find instructions on how to do that on our 2022 Winter Series Resources page. I will post a link to that page in the Zoom chat in just a moment. We want to acknowledge everyone, all of you who has joined the series. Participants from, uh, people have registered from 67 countries spanning six continents. Um, it's extraordinary that within the real hardships of the last two years, we have found ourselves um, more connected in many ways. And being with you for this series and past series um, has been a gift and continues to be a gift for all of us. Um, 
Yeah, in this virtual form of sharing Bonnie's teachings, um, we've been able to offer an immense number of scholarships, uh, making her teaching more available and accessible to those who would otherwise not have been able to study with her. And we've also been able to reach a lot of new people this way as well. So we put a map together uh, to visually see what 67 countries means. Um, take a minute to feel how we are all here together in this moment in time, we're circling the earth. Let's take a look and feel it. And let us know, let everyone know in the chat which of the 67 countries you're from. Okay, thank you, Amr Deep. Okay. I feel you all, we feel you all. This is us. And now this is Bonnie. Enjoy class. Welcome to our circle around the earth. And if this is your first time, join in. It sustains me even when we're not here together on screen. We're here together by being ourselves. Welcome to my corner. And thank you for welcoming me into your space. Some of you are here right now in this moment, which is in different time zones, different seasons. Everything is different, space, time. Wait. Some of you are tomorrow already, and then maybe you're seeing this. What for me now is next year. We are in the same space and time. There are very few of us who are actually in the same space. Len and I are here in this space now. Everyone else is around the world. Gratitude and a few tears. In a certain way, what I have to offer is information. But in a certain way, another certain way, it's about being each of us ourself. Within community, with people that in other circumstances we would never meet. So the harshness of this pandemic, the invisibility of it, along with the suffering has brought this great gift. Yeah, I'm a little crooked. When I enter this space with you, I have a plan. It's good to know. 
but it's from the invisibility of our connection what emerges. My frontal lobe keeps track of, Bonnie, finish your sentence, and please don't interrupt yourself. The rest of it comes. And for each of us, it comes to us through ourself in this community. So welcome to everyone who's been sharing this journey. Some for almost 50 years, another year it'll be 50 years for some of us. 40, 30, 20, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, just this moment now, new. It's a lot to absorb, to really feel, feel ourself and each other. This is the first time I believe that I'm offering a series on the muscles outside of a training program. It's not usually the place of entry. So you're coming, I thank you. And we'll see what, ha- what, we, what, what is called for. It's very exciting. It's a little bit traditional, but mainly non-traditional and how they come together. So in each of the series, we've looked at postural tone in different ways in each of the four previous series. And in this series, we will look at postural tone from the standpoint of the muscles. That's usually what People think of muscle tone as being in the muscles. Postural tone is in the posture, in stillness, and also in motion. It's the underlying ground, the underground vibration You know, hands-on, it's easier to transmit. And we're all, but we're all together in, in this invisibility, in space, in consciousness. It's this underground flow of postural tone. I hope you're joining me. It's not a lecture. I'm using words. You see the words through postural tone. And postural tone through the words. I think it's it's cool here. It's not cold, but maybe I'll still leave it on. Maybe I'll take it off. So we speak of muscles. I didn't look up because I don't use the computer, but you can look up. When were, when were muscles first studied? I know Leonardo da Vinci, so at least 500 years ago, and um, Vesalius, I don't know when he lived. But when they started to actually dissect the muscles of people who had died and uh, animals, they named them. A lot of them have, I think, Latin, Greek. I'm not a classic uh, student of the classics in the body, but not in the words. And whoever started giving them names, they were looked at mechanically. 
So most of us know about the biceps here, and if not, it's maybe not in English, but this muscle here, there's actually more than one, but we'll say the biceps. Are these, this group of muscles is named because when it shortens, it flexes the arm, the elbow. So just do that for a moment. Feel, feel your flexor muscles here, the biceps brachialis. And when you shorten it, the, the elbow flexes. And it was given the word concentric contraction in, in, in I don't know, you'll have to, I'm wanting to, I'm feeling your other language, which I have to allow you to do your own languaging. But when you bring your arm up, can you feel your muscle? It's shortening. But when you lower it, it's lengthening. So it equally flexes and extends. So this is a concentric contraction and this is an eccentric contraction. Those are the words I learned over 60 years ago. I started this study formally, 1958. So to say that the, the biceps is a flexor it helps us organize, but it's only half the truth. And then to say that it shortens, people go, now I have to exercise. I shorten the muscles and I get this bulk. Feel that, that's very different than feeling the condensing. It's condensing, it's a volume. And when you condense it, it's not just uh, directional. It's not to say not to do that, but when you do it, condense it and use the whole body. So muscles are encased in fascia. And the fascia weaves the fibers together. It's not like, um, plastic wrapping, the fascia itself is our cells moving. So when you contract in shortening, there's sliding of the fascia and the muscles. And when you extend, that's equally active. So the word contraction doesn't have a meaning in English, meaning to shorten anymore. So if we say condensing, con condensing and expanding. So I condense and I expand is different than I concentrically contract and I eccentrically contract. Play with those two concepts, concentric, eccentric or condense, your whole body gets involved to your feet. And I think that's, I feel from experience, not just I think, the thinking comes later, that that's a key to staying vital. I feel this ages us by turning just turning the right word, by constricting the blood vessels. You feel how you constrict your flow of blood when you do that, where you want to pump the blood so your heart can rest. If, 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 if we go like this, I'm speaking from my perspective, by the way, it's not the truth. It, you have to find your own truth. This is my truth. That here there's a constriction, which means I have to be careful because I could do that. This is through experience. I've done that. Then the heart has to work harder where if the flesh 
is condensing and expanding equally, our heart can just go, hmm, go along with the ride. Sorry, but your shoulders are lifted, Bonnie. Could you lower your shoulders? Is that better? Yes. No. Feel the fascia, the muscle continuity, connectivity. Moving everywhere. So if you move your index finger, your toes are responding. It's moving through your body. If you want to, don't do this. Just watch, watch this. I'm not going to really do it either. If you do this kind of head rolling, you really can destroy your neck. But what if you leave your head here? <laughs> if you're not on a ball, they're really nice, and maybe they don't have balls where you are. But if you, if you have a ball, it's kind of fun. You can do it on a chair, but I like the ball. It keeps me jumping. Um, if you place your hands at your uh, TMJ joint, um, find your the holes of your ears and then come down in that space of the cranium and the lower jaw. And you can move your jaw side to side. But you could also then hold your jaw and move your skull side to side. Or you can bring your jaw forward and back. Or you can bring your flex and extend your skull. That's, that's our first movement, or one of our first most important movements in nursing and why it's important if possible for a baby to nurse at the breast, where they reach out, take hold of the nipple, take hold and come back and suck with the palate and the skull moving. So that movement is not flex your head, extend your neck, flex your neck, extend your head or neck, but The jaw and your skull here are moving through the whole body. So you'll see a cat or you'll see a baby. If they're nursing, their hands are going or their feet are going. So the stiffness in the neck is due to some kind of, my hair got long since we started. I used to be short. Uh, people will go like this to the neck because it's forward, they'll go like this. Well, that just, again, puts pressure on the heart, but it also squeezes the vessels and dries out the fluidity of the neck. So I think it was last summer, I don't remember exactly each series, but we explored, um, the neck. Um, and by the way, those of you who are new, the old series are available. Um, period. Uh, so with this condensing and expanding, it's the same way in the jaw. It's not Shortening, lengthening, shortening, lengthening. It's, I hope you're doing this. It feels really good. And it also helps to pinch yourself a little bit. That was in another series of the proprioception for the muscles of the face come from the skin. So move your skin to move your muscles and move your muscles to move your skin and the fascia and your feet. <laughs> Bring blood to your eyes, to your ears, to your nose. 
I mean, the different kinds of breathing in the concha, they open and they, they move. So I'm going to go to the skeleton here. To show the head, yeah, I'm going to come closer. So here at the um, the atlas, occipital joint, sometimes I have to leave room for the words, that we often look at um, a muscle action here at the neck, at the atlanto-occipital joint. And that's great. So you find that hole, that depression under your skull. And instead of flexion extension, feel condensing and expanding on the front and then condensing in the back and expanding on the back. So depending which one you're looking at, it's not flexion extension as this, um, it can be that as this linear process, but in the front, it's this. And then it's that. And meanwhile, in the back, it's like that and like this. So we explored before uh, back bends not to press the chest forward, but expand the front. And, and when you expand the front, the back kind of by condensing, it's not, it's, 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 like an octopus, not octopi, octopusing. So in your neck, if you go to the side, it's not, you can do that, but it's, it's fluid. And there's a, um, a law that I learned in kinesiology more than 60 years ago, that when the muscle contracts, whatever muscle is being looked at, the opposite side relaxes. So it's called the antagonist the muscle contracting, the antagonist relaxes. But when you do that, if for example, I haven't finished with the skeleton, but I'm gonna step back so you can see me a little bit more. Uh, if I, if I bring my arm forward, hope you do this with me, otherwise, what's the point? If, if I contract the shoulder flexors and I relax the extensors, I'm not gonna have any control. This is lengthening actively. I learned this in working with uh, children many years ago. Well, more than 50 years ago, working with children with uh, cerebral palsy, that one of the problems is that there's not this coordinating equally between this condensation and elongation. How do we equally engage the muscles on all sides of the joint? 
<laughs> this side's down now. I better do this side. So instead of flexion extension, and this is the active person, person muscle, and that's the active one. When you bring your shoulder, your arm forward, this is shortening. But when you bring it down, if you stop contracting, your arm will fall. It, and if you use your concentric contraction in the back, you'll swing your arm back. In order to lower your arm, it's this eccentric, this, con, this expanding that brings your arm down. This is not, the extensors are not extending your arm, your flexors are extending your arm. It has to do with gravity. And we're gonna go over that more in a, later. I'm just gonna leave that for now. We'll put different principles together. So I'm introducing today postural tone, which we'll be covering throughout the eight classes and contraction, which we'll cover. And I'll do one more thing today, just to introduce the palette. So what I'm wanting to share today, my neighbor walked by, um, is that these are equally active. And that there's, the muscles are sliding. The fibers are sliding together and apart. They're, they're condensing like, again, I like the octopus or what is it, the slime mold that it's not, this is what we're, when we're trained in muscle. I've even been told for recently and also decades ago that when in the science of movement programs, there's no movement. It's all visual and looking at charts or something. And this old, this old science of concentric, eccentric, and that muscles are named, it's fine. It, I'm grateful because I wouldn't be doing this today if I hadn't gone through that clarity that's mechanical, not to throw it away. Don't throw it away, but evolve it, evolve it into today into cellular equality. We could use that in our culture. You know, hierarchy, it came out of a hierarchical, mechanical, it's okay, it came out of that, but let's take it into more flat, more living feeling. It's emotional. I'm tense. Well, that tension creates mental, psychological issues. So maybe I'm dealing with it through imagery, through emotion, whatever, but I'm still carrying around this form. Let the form become more mobile, more juicy and fun so that whatever the emotional processing is, it has a vehicle to be expressed. I hope you're moving with me, otherwise, it's your choice. Now back to the head of the skeleton. I hope this is making sense. Um, so we look at, Again, traditionally, that the, I have to stop for my word. The atlanto-occipital joint controls the movement of the head. But that's not the first movement that a baby does. The first movement is in the mouth. The earliest cranial nerves to myelinate, well, is vestibular, is to 
register the movement of the embryo and the fetus. They have to know what, what's going on proprioceptively, which we'll be covering in this course, course workshop series. But the first uh, nerve after the vestibular have to do with the mouth because we need that for uh, nourishment, for eating, and we need it for breathing. So I just saw someone asking the chat to cease. It doesn't cease, but uh, ask Basha how to turn your chat off. You don't need to see it. It's, it's a distraction for you if you don't want to see it. But it's an important part of the um, series for people to communicate. And then at the end, I read the chat. And it's the only feedback that I actually get um, individually. Uh, is that it takes me a couple hours, which I love, to read the chat. And usually it's about what we're talking about. Sometimes it's about, oh, I have to wash my hair to get the dye out or something. Sometimes it's what you wouldn't necessarily do in class, but just turn it off. Um, I did interrupt myself, but I felt it was important to answer you. So with the mouth, it's the first movement of the head. And uh, I don't have a table in front of me, but if you're watching on a computer or something, you can put your elbows on a table and then put your chin in your hand. And so it's your skull that's moving. I don't know how clean your thumb is, but if you put your thumb in your mouth, I can't talk and put my thumb in my mouth and you, you reach up, okay? And you put your thumb Are you okay? Don't do that. If you look, If you look at the skull, at your skull, here, this, here's the palate. And behind this, this is the hard palate. And behind it is a soft palate, which this is plastic, but it modeled after somebody. So we can be grateful to this person who gave us this opportunity to see what our skeleton is. So when you put your thumb in your mouth, if you can feel the end of the hard palate into the soft palate, that's where the mother's nipple goes in a baby's mouth. It's drawn back to the soft palate. And so the palate is like a pump. And now I'm gonna back up so you can see me. I don't know if I can get the skull back on easily. Well, that was, oh, I know, this is easy. Um, it's hard to get this back on. And I didn't get this on exactly right. So I may have to uh, ignore it or pause. Give me a second. I'm going to leave you till later, okay? Um, there's a little hole up here and it's hard to find. Um, I did distract myself. So I'm going to bring the skeleton. Thank you very much. Come back on the ball. Mm 
that the movement, if you have a tight neck, and a lot of us do, I won't say most of us, it's your mouth and this, this orchestration of the muscles, not this linear, I hope that that's one thing that I'm able to transmit. This is a mechanical outside evaluation of muscles. And if we walked around like that, we would look like a robot and they're looking at robots now to look like people walking about. So we can let go of that image and just feel how your muscles are equally engaged. They're engaged concentrically. Sorry, no, it's a C word. Uh, condensing, but it's sliding. You feel your muscles slide. The fibers are sliding. They really are. I don't know if we'll get to that in this eight series. We'll see. There's a lot to get through. And for those of you who have the opportunity to join a BMC uh, training, then there's their muscles, a course on the muscles. But that's unfortunately that's limited to locations, but some of you are in those locations. So we'll do it here. Is, is this making sense? If you were in the room, I could see you. I could see, I could go over to you and I could infuse, infuse this, not teach it. That if you wanna bring your arm, this is horizontal, Adduction, horizontal abduction, gratitude for who named it. But it's about hugging. It's about, ah, what happened? Oh, that was in uh, the winter series. The embracing reflex. It's called the Morrow after Dr. Morrow, who himself named it the embracing reflex. But doctors like their name on something. Somebody else gave it his name. He said it in German. I only read about that recently. But it's before you hug someone, you, you have to open. And if something happens, it's like catastrophic. You open and then hopefully there's somebody there who can. We have this circle. We're opening and to embrace. You can't embrace unless you open. And that opening isn't horizontal abduction, horizontal adduction. It's expanding the front, condensing the back, and then taking hold and expanding the back, the back body. That's the skin and the nervous system. The front body is nourishment, the back body is protection. We extend the protection around somebody and somebody else takes us in for their nourishment. We're not just collapse. We're taking in, we're offering. I'm gonna stop for a minute and just play, you play. I'm gonna watch, I can't see you, but I know I'm in your space and I can hold that space. I just saw Issa say there's some Zoom problems, I'm sorry. And if you see this later, you're still in the same place because none of us are in the same place at any time except for the one right next to you. Or maybe they're in the other room. We are in eternity together. So I'm watching.
By the way, sometimes it's not possible. I saw something on the chat about nursing. Sometimes it's not possible for a baby to be nursed, including maybe ourselves when we were babies. Rather, it's physical, cultural, some situational. Um, it's still there because these are ancient patterns. It was they were approached intellectually, which was a great um, gift. But now we're taking it back into the natural with gratitude to, for the intellectual. And but the, the nipple of a bottle doesn't go back that far in the mouth. So the baby ends up doing more uh, cheap. Uh, rather than palate and uh, uh, pharyngeal behind that. Uh, it's just more, it's more superficial here. And that has a gift. It means we can discover the other with consciousness instead of discovering it unconsciously <laughs> and then let it go back to the unconscious. I don't know if it made any sense, but you can see it again. All right, so what does this have to do with postural tone? Postural tone is, is this underlying vibrational foundation of liveliness and we see it in the muscles because it's through the muscles that we move. But all of the cells of the body and maybe the molecules, we, the atoms, we could keep going back, but I'll stop with the cells for now, although we do that also, um, are contributing to tone. So a baby born, Oh, maybe I interrupted. When a baby's born, the tone is evaluated. So I'm gonna ask Amardi to show us, uh, thank you. Stop with that one and I'll say something, please. So here we see a baby in the womb and then in their process of birthing, so the one on the left, I call it the baby ball reflex. It's a reflex that's stimulated by the environment of the womb and it's total flexion of the body. That's our first movement pattern of the whole body. There are other movement patterns, so I don't know if first is the right word, but we're, all, the, all the parts of the body wake up. So let's just say this is a major early pattern and it develops in the last trimester of pregnancy as the, uh, the fetus and uh, grows in the uterus, in the womb, and there's a lot of resistance to expanding. There's a lot of resistance to expanding and, the, and there's a condensing, there's a rhythm of growing, coming in, to, of expanding out, coming in, expanding out. And so if you were born early or you had a, a baby or you know someone born early, they didn't have this container of pulsating condensing and expanding that builds tone. And the first tone to develop is the flexor tone. And that forms the ground for postural tone through the whole body. And this particular um, baby ball 
reflex is very helpful to simulate after a baby's born, in particular, the first three months as they transition into this then uh, world of space. That also builds what is called physiological flexion. And we'll come back to those terms. So there's a baby ball reflex, which I named physiological flexion came to me through the Dr. Carl and Berta Bobath with whom I studied in uh, the 1960s. Then the one, the picture on the right is of the baby emerging from the birth canal. And you can see the extension, the baby, is pushing with the feet through the, reaching with the head, pushing with the feet to emerge out of the womb. This is creating, not creating, the, the words are important, but I'm always, I sometimes have difficulty. So I'm calling this the birthing reflex, stimulating, or as a result of, it's a mutual relationship, physiological extension. So we have this baby ball reflex developed in the last trimester, developing physiological flexion. Then at the time of birth, it's been developing, the baby's been pushing the baby, the fetus, whatever name, we the same person has been ex condensing and expanding as the whole body and then pushing. Finally, there's an opening for the head to emerge. And so the head is reaching through, the feet are pushing through, the arms remain flexed. That I will have to do something with a picture later. So that's developing and an expression of physiological extension. Then if we go to the next slide, please, Amardeep. This, this is a, these are two newborns. Um, their postural tone is being um, observed or analyzed. Right? And the baby on the left is a full-term baby has developed physiological flexion and is in the baby ball reflex posture, physiological flexion. The baby on the right, I will inter interrupt myself. I sometimes get right and left mixed up. So you have to be aware of my own challenges with languaging. The baby on the, my right, not the screens, right? I get confused here. Anyway, just the baby that's hanging over. The tone is not developed yet. The flexor tone has not developed. So it's more than likely a premature baby who didn't develop yet flexor postural tone. So the arms are extended the legs and the whole body has this low tone. So somebody would say this person has low tone. And I would say they need help. They need understanding and building flexor tone. And that's one of the things in our uh, IDME program, the infant one, is how to build postural tone beginning with flexor tone. And we did look at that in some of the series with the feet and with contact and gravity. So uh, I think, I oh no, there's one more about the babies, Amardeep. So on the left, the baby has low tone. Can you see they haven't, one, I'm stuttering. One could say that the baby on the left that's leaning forward with the hands on the floor 
doesn't have extension of the spine. Can you see why I would say that? And that would be looking at it mechanically. They don't have enough concentric shortening contraction in their back to lift them up. But the problem is they don't have enough flexor tone. They don't have enough physiological flexor postural tone that would knit the belly and it would be through the belly from the front of the pelvis that would bring the back upright. It's, and so when people talk about building core strength, this is an example of meeting core strength, but not by contracting the belly, because if you contract the belly, what's going to happen? The baby will go further forward. But if you develop postural tone, the baby will sit up. And this is something we'll be looking at through the series. This baby should not have been placed in sitting. So the psychological, amp, amp, what's the word? The psychological um, implication. implication. Thank you, Lynn is motioning to me. The, uh, I have to stop when I fall into a language hole, I kind of fall into a hole uh, altogether. So I have to pause. Maybe this happens to some of you. That if the baby contracts their belly, which is often taught to develop core strength as adults, it just makes more flexion. But as you develop postural tone, flexor postural tone, it brings strength through the fascia, through the whole body. And it would bring energy up through the whole front of the body to the neck to bring the baby to verticality. So I know the psych psychological implication of that baby, even when this baby develops enough muscle strength to sit vertically, there's an underlying emotional, psychological component that's underneath it. and that we each define in our own way. Then the baby on the right, my right side, has too high a postural tone. They were also set too soon. You can tell they have the flexor tone. You see their hands are fisted. What is the psychological implication here? What are the babies concentrating on to sit when they were sat too soon? So this baby has postural tone, but they didn't develop enough to be placed in this anti-gravity position. Eventually, both of these babies will sit, but they're gonna sit in very different ways than the baby in the middle. where the baby developed balanced postural tone. So what is the where are these babies' attention? And they're all going to be fine. They're all going to, all three will walk and sit, become adults. But there's a certain underlying training that's being developed when we place babies unsupported in postures that they cannot get in and out of on their own. And it's a, it's a good question to ask for ourselves, what do we need to be in this situation that we are in now in which we are balanced internally and externally? And what kind of help can we provide somebody else who's in a situation where the tone is too low, low or too high 
and struggling, what do they need to sit themselves in their place, not to sit them there passively? I think that we are at the place where we could begin to uh, take some questions if anyone has them, not to answer them, but to extend them, hopefully. Yes. Back up a little bit uh, so my whole body's in there. Okay, we do have questions. Let me find them here. Okay, uh, somebody asked, um, as a yoga teacher, how do you, they, as a yoga teacher, uh, they sometimes see adults who have similar patterns of poor uh, tone in certain areas. How do you, how do you advise uh, to help them, they say strengthen their postural tone, maybe to build their postural tone? That's what this series is about. Uh, today is more introducing concepts. Well, they're all about concepts, but um, building, uh, building postural tone and build, repatterning and how to balance through the muscles where we, how we express movement. And also to go in depth, again, I'm going to say the previous series, we've been looking at postural tone in every series from, a diff from different perspectives. So this is from the perspective of muscles, but there are others that are uh, from other perspectives. So both the past and what's coming forward future and your own discoveries, your own other people, right? We're, we're a world. Thank you for that question. I have it also. Ready for the next one? Yes. Okay. Uh, could you please speak more to the psychological component of different postural tones? Rather than speak about it, I have a thing across my screen. Yeah. Why don't we do it? Just lower your tone. What do you feel? And then sit up with it. Move with it. What are gonna be your tendencies? Perhaps to hold. I don't know, there are different different solutions. Play with it. We, we still move. You might see a, a tightness, well, you could have a looseness in the joints. See, there's no one answer. You could have a looseness or you could have tightness to, to hold it up like that baby. They just got kind of stiff in the joint to hold up. They used a local, when we say eccentric contractions, which we'll look at uh, also, but not, not this moment. Or the other baby that I can do this. If you, have more, if you don't have the strength to do it easily, because you didn't get there yourself, somebody put you there and you have to hang on or you fall over. What are you gonna do? And then eventually you get up and you let go, but underneath, what's underneath that? These are whole body postures, condensing and expanding 
we'll be coming back to this. It's not that we develop elbow flexion, we develop condensing, condensing, expanding. And they're always underneath typing. It's not type, 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 type. It's typing. The answer lies in you, not in me. My answer lies in me. And I've explored the patterns different ways in life. I see someone mentioned hypermobility there in the chat. Yes. We're going to look some at that. Although hypermobility, I feel, is more ligamentous. But we'll, we're going to look at that relationship. Not the answer, the relationship. Ready? Yes. Okay, I don't want to interrupt, so. Um, I'll just stop, I'll just stop. Okay. Okay, uh, there are some questions that have come in uh, about the correlation, if and what is the correlation between low postural tone and muscle weakness or high postural tone and muscle tightness. Could you speak to that? I can speak to it. And again, we're going to peel it away When you, when you don't have full body postural tone, you're gonna to have to do something locally. You just will. And postural tone develops from the womb, from yes. There are also genetics in this. There are also other instances of things. If you have something, <laughs> uh, Lycra, uh, with children it used to use, you know what, li look at a Lycra material that's stretchy like a bathing suit, maybe, and, and you make a, a circle with it, and then you can leave room for your head, your face, and you put it over your body or a child, and then you can play with. <laughs> or do something with, that I have here, a, a blanket maybe, and you get my arm inside. And <laughs> and you do it. Do you have something that you could, you know, get up and get something and wrap it around your head and your arms, at least, or ultimately your whole body, and feel how <laughs> it's hard to do with it. That you have to, <sighs> you know, wrestling. If you have a, someone who wrestle with your contact or improv or something where you you go against a wall. I'm kind of on a screen here, but you can go against a wall. Well, I can get up. And I go back here. It's going to be cold. <laughs> it's going to be cold. And I'm against the wall, and I, I want to not resist it like like you know the green hall or something but I'm, I, it's it's would be soft it would move with me I could you know you see a cat get on the on the earth and they the contact is important to build postural tone that felt good maybe I'll do that again or, or I'll go on the floor I don't feel like going on the floor. Why not? 
Again, this is not a performance. Do it yourself. Ugh. I love you, but I still don't want to be cold. So against the floor. And you'll feel your belly come in, not because you're doing a, a sit up, but because you're engaging. You know, as you get older also, it gets harder. I can still sit up, but it's not as easy as it was years ago, but I can still do it because my fascia is connecting through practice. And this is not doing <coughs> pulling my belly in so I won't look fat. It's engaging. You do it. Take a few minutes. Actually, I want to show, I think the baby's like, you see, if I lean over like this, I have to be careful. Don't, don't hurt yourself. Lean over. It's not this that will bring you up. That'll just push your low back forward. It's this engagement in the front. So if you... If you're too low tone here and you and you extend and you contract your belly, you're not going to sit up. You're going to go further around this way. So you let your belly go and you grab you, you increase your tone on the front of your body through the fascia. It's not just a muscle thing, it's the fascia wrapping the muscle. Otherwise, you have a local uh, locking in the joints, uh, pushing the head. Okay, so I'm like this. So someone said, Bonnie, your, your neck is falling forward. Oh, is this better? Maybe it looks better, but it's going to age me physiologically. Where is my hands, the tone in the palm of my hands? that flexor tone that it's not, it's flexor, but it's condensing and expanding. There's not really one or the other. They're both happening at the same time. I feel like it'd be good for you to, I'm looking at the clock. Take some time to play. This is not a, a question answer period. It's a question explore. Uh, I have a, a question about something you said. You said um, increasing the tone through the fascia um, rather than sucking in the belly. For people who are new, who increasing the tone through the fascia is a very new concept. Is that something that you will be uh, sharing about in later classes? Yes. <laughs> the fascia has proprioceptors. We're going to do quite a bit with proprioceptors. There are proprioceptors, which are sense organs about position and space, relationship of parts to each other, uh, relation to gravity, relation to the magnetic forces of space. These are sense receptors that have to do with position and movement. So there are sensory receptors in the muscles, in the tendons, in the ligaments, which are specialized fascia. And the fascia are more probably than anywhere else, any other sense organ in the body because the fascia is just one, um, one structure. It doesn't have parts. So as soon as you feel it, and we'll, again, we will do more with this, yes. And by the way, I wrote up 
different study guides that will be in your resource account. Basha will tell you about that af after class. So don't turn off right away. Uh, Basha has some announcements that, that will be that are for you. So even if it's four in the morning, unless you've been here before and you know the announcement, uh, wait a few minutes. So yes, the tone of the fascia has to do with proprioceptors, sense organs, which this does not activate. Are you playing? Another question. So a little bit of a follow-up of what you've just been sharing. You shared uh, some beautiful options for people to explore. Uh, they were rather large uh, movements. So for people who experience things like uh, maybe cerebral palsy or muscul um, muscular dystrophy or limited mobility for whatever reason, how would you um, suggest that they explore this postural tone. That's really important. Um, when I was four, I had polio and my spine was paralyzed for two months and I couldn't um, move my spine. And it's particularly my neck and, uh, but my whole spine. So I, I have an understanding uh, deeply of what it is to be paralyzed and not move. And a strength of that is that I know stillness. Everything has a gift as well as a curse and a curse and a gift. They're not ones we ask for, but we receive them. What are we gonna do with them? Another thing is I broke this arm when I was 10 and I had what was legally, legally medically called a, a claw hand. And over the years, I've found out how to regain that movement. And one of the reasons is that I feel is that because of the polio center, this didn't have the uh, pathway to heal. Then even since you've seen me uh, in the six months, my hand is open more. I still can't do this but I'm getting pretty close. So even though I just turned 80, but even since I turned 80, I'm getting more movement in my hand. Those of you who know me for 50 years, it's very different. Um, so when there's something, oh, and then a post polio, I forgot 25 years ago, I collapsed and was housebound for three years. We can do it by being with where we are. So I show off now because I can, but I, I've been where I can't, which is why I, I show off now. Um, start with where you are. And as we get more specific, it'll be easier. But for example, I'll come close. So maybe let my hand and face, let's see. Uh, I'll just show you, there's scar here, all the way up my arm here. There's scars here. My fingers are scab, uh, what do you call scarred? is that if I tried to just do flexion and extension, there was no way. And even this little one, you know, I, that's my thumb. I still have trouble to move this one. Um, so I explore it with micro movements and I will help this pinky finger because it, it, it needs help. And by giving it contact, 
I'm not trying to do a local action, but fascial. So maybe get more of them back up. is that it's my whole body. So what I discovered is when, when this action in my hand reaches my, this part of my belly, pelvic area, you see my arm begins to lengthen from here. Not just here, it's this action. Uh, somebody in this chat has just asked why the contact helps. It's just, um, it's nature. It's a given. We inherited that contact is important. It's essential. One of the the great challenges of the pandemic is we've lost the ability to contact. And actually, I discovered in myself by seeing a little children wearing the mask, little children, maybe four. Now I've seen even, I think, less than two-year-olds now. Um, they came out. I, they came out of a um, martial art studio and they were, they were just so happy and they had their little mask on, but it didn't seem to bother them. And I was like, don't come near me. And I thought, I just have a mask on. I don't have to be inside. I had withdrawn from contact. So then I realized the mask wasn't isolating me. I was isolating me. There's something about contact so I could still have contact with people, even with a mask. So I don't know how to show you that it's not this. It's, it's this that's opening my hand. Not this. It's getting there, gang. So if you're having a difficulty, and I know there's a young teenager here in the class who does have cerebral palsy. And this is gonna be very helpful for you. And I know your mom is doing it with you to find how the control is everywhere together, just as in the world, we're going to go through this pandemic together. And any isolated place is not isolated. Okay, thank you everyone so much for all your questions. Um, although Bonnie isn't able to respond to them all during class, she does read them afterwards and they help her to um, plan for the next classes. The three documents that Bonnie mentioned, uh, Bonnie mentioned some things have been put into your account. We added three documents that Bonnie wrote. The illustrations, um, that actually, I don't think you showed those today. Anyway, they contain some illustrations you'll see when you find them in your account. Um, the illustrations of the babies shown in class today were just for showing in class. They will not be added to your, to your account. Uh, however, they will be in the class recording and you can revisit them at any time. A short copyright notice about the materials you receive from us in this series. The illustrations and all materials you receive from us are copyrighted material of Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen. No part of the documents or videos, either text or image, may be used for purpose, any purpose other than personal use. These documents <clears throat> are for use in, in your own study of the material. 
You may not share them with others, post them on social media, website, blogs, use them in your classes or print and hand them out. Thank you for respecting Bonnie's copyright. Excuse me, I have a little tickle in my throat. Um, as Bonnie mentioned, I do have some important information to share with you. I hope you'll stick around <laughs> to hear them. But um, first, if uh, you would like to close the teaching part of class. We're here. Thank you. Be well. And I'll see you next week or whenever the time brings us together. Okay. Thank you for a wonderful class. What a great start to the 2022 winter series. Um, thank you to each of you who came today um, for the live class, for those of you who are watching the class recording, thank you. A big thank you as always to the chat fairies in the Zoom chat. Um, we, you are beloved and appreciated. This class is being recorded and the class recording will be made available to everyone who registered for the 2022 winter series. The recording will be made available through online streaming on our website and you will have unlimited access to it um, even after the winter series is over. The cl class recordings, documents, all of the information you receive from us will stay in your accounts indefinitely. So you can watch them whenever you want and however many times that you want. The Zoom chat from today will be added to your account um, with the class recording. We will email you when the class recording is ready. It typically takes us one to two days um, to have the video ready for you. Uh, we will email you when it's available and in your account, in your account. English language captions will be added to the videos as soon as we receive them from the captioning company. That usually takes a couple of days, uh, usually takes a couple of days after the class recording is ready. Study groups. Study groups are organized around the material Vani presents. Um, in her 2022 winter series, and they are available to all of you. The study groups are a wonderful opportunity to deepen your understanding of the material Bonnie presents, ask more personal questions, and to interact and connect with other par participants in an intimate way. There are currently nine study groups organized in four different languages. Um, as more study groups are organized, we will include those add those to the study group list. The study groups are offered and facilitated by organizations offered to a license to offer school for body mind centering programs and body mind centering professionals who have met specific educational and professional requirements. Information about study groups, including how to contact facilitators can be found on the 2022 winter series resources page We'll include a link to that page in the email we send you later today. Um, please note that um, Bonnie's office is not running these study groups. Um, they are being offered by individuals and organizations outside of her office. So please contact the person or organization hosting the study group directly with any questions. Uh, we are unable to offer any other information about the study groups except how to connect with them. The 2022 Winter Series Resources page is a page that I will <laughs> talk about a lot. It contains a lot of great information. It contains a lot of the questions that we get answered, that we get asked are answered on that page. We will continually refer you back to that um, page to um, answer questions about how to access class recordings and materials, how to contact study groups, Zoom chat guidelines how to hide the Zoom chat. There are instructions on how to do that there. Uh, there are links to free supplementary videos. The first class of Bonnie's last three online series is free. We've made it free for everyone. We've included links to those um, recordings on the, on the winter series resources page. 
And there are some other resources on there that Bonnie has recommendations for you if you wanna check it out. We will continue to add to that page as the winter series unfolds. Bonnie mentioned the Muscles course and the Infant Developmental Movement Education program in class today. Uh, these are offered through the School for Body, Mind, and Centering licensed organizations. Um, the school was founded by Bonnie and she is the educational director. The Muscles course is part of the Somatic Movement Education Program. Um, it can be taken independently without commitment to the entire program. The School for Body, Mind, Centering programs are offered in 15 countries and we will include links and more information about that in the email we send you later today. Our emails sometimes go to spam or promotions folders rather than inboxes. Um, just uh, check your spam folders uh, every once in a while. Um, and if you have a Gmail account to check your promotions folder, uh, we will be emailing you more often now that the winter series is um, has started. We are still accepting registrations for Bonnie's um, 2022 winter series. We would love it if you could help us spread the word we are keeping the pay for the pay from the heart scholarships and payment plan options open. We would like everyone who wants to study with Bonnie to be able to do so um, through this winter series, regardless of financial situation. This pay from the heart scholarship is something that we have been able to offer for all of Bonnie's online classes throughout the pandemic. Uh, it has brought us great joy to be able to offer it and to. Um, be in community with, with everyone who would like to join her. Uh, please share the, share the scholarship information with anyone that you think might be interested in studying with her, but needs financial assistance to be able to attend. Our Pay From The Heart Scholarship is a community project. Um, it looks at how we can all support one another as individuals and as a community. If you would like to help support the registration of those who need the scholarship to attend Bonnie's 2022 Winter Series classes, you can do so on the Support the Scholarship page on our website. We will include a link to that in the email we send you later today. That is it for announcements. Uh, please stay for a few minutes. We'll put some of the information I just shared on the screen. You also have a little longer to share with each other and with Bonnie in the chats. It was wonderful to be with you all today. We look forward to being with you again on February 3rd. Take care.